This is Dave Barker. I mean, it was like a, a cruise missile with wings went right there. Come on. It's gone, man. We're going to talk about something, probably the most serious moment of my career, and that's 9-11. I worked for uh, Channel 9 in New York. Uh, we had a great investigative unit. I was part of that. Uh, I came in one morning wearing a pink shirt, I'll never forget, and whatever pants, not thinking I was going to be going out that morning. Spectacularly blue sky. It was election day. It was Tuesday. And uh, so I'm getting ready to edit. And around 8.46, 48 in the morning, CNN, uh, something pops up. Uh, I, was, I was standing at the assignment desk, smoke coming from, uh, I think it was a North Tower. What's it? Yeah. This just in, you were looking at a, obviously a very disturbing live shot there. That is the World Trade Center, and we have unconfirmed reports this morning that a plane has crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. The CNN Center right now is just beginning to work on this story, obviously calling our sources and trying to figure out exactly what happened, but clearly something relatively devastating happening this morning there. First of all, we're just gone. The image itself was amazing. We're, we're across the Hudson River in Jersey, in Secaucus, New Jersey, from Manhattan, where it was going on. It's the crow flies, what? Steve, Steve Miller, by the way. Steve shot the stuff for me, which is ironic that he's doing this for me, too. What? Probably eight miles. Probably eight miles, you know, 10, 15 minute drive normally around going through the Lincoln Tunnel or whatever. Uh, that day, though, they started closing off lower Manhattan, obviously. We didn't know that at the time. So we take off. Uh, now, Steve, you and Joe, another reporter, trying to get over there to Manhattan. You guys ended up on a ferry, right? Here's uh, images of that, and they, they actually, again, shut down, totally shut down Manhattan, which is, if you don't know Manhattan, it's an island, about a mile, uh, about a mile wide, what, 10 miles long, and, and uh, bridges and tunnels and everything was shut down. We found a, a boat captain who wanted $1,000 cash, right? He wanted $1,000 cash because he could lose his license to get us over there. So us, our two crews, um, and uh, some other people, Newsweek or whoever, some other journalists, started going over there. Uh, you know, it was about a, a two, three minute um, um, ride over to, to, to the midtown area of Manhattan. And in the meantime, you know, towers were coming down and people, you know, you could see people with ties as they were jumping out of the World Trade Center. I mean, it's just... I. I was there, and um, I still cannot describe the events we saw that day as we tried to make our way from Midtown down to Lower Manhattan. Just, just amazing, again, hard to describe images. And we just we run, run into people, and the police officers and, uh, you know, rescuers, first responders, and do quick little interviews. Looked like it was a 737 size jet. And it headed straight into the uh, northern tower, the, the two big towers. It was the northern tower and ran right to the side, I'd say about 75, 80 stories up. And at first we assumed it was some sort of a horrible accident until secondary explosions and secondary collisions started happening and then we knew something else was going on. Are you from New York? Born and raised, yeah. I watched those two towers get built. How does this affect your heart? I'm not sure yet. It's hard. Ask me in the year. We were coming downtown, we could see the tower was starting to fall. We made a left to try and uh, evade it, and in our, uh, looking in the rearview mirrors, we could see that the tower just collapsing, dust and debris for blocks. We couldn't see anything, it was pitch black. One thing that really broke my heart that day was this. You could see all of these ambulances, this long line of ambulances. Remember this, Steve? And I remember, what, seven, eight, eight hours later, going by the same area? All those ambulances were still there. I don't want this to be negative, but we could not get in there. We had press passes. And it was like, hey, you know, we should show what's going on in there, that this hate in there, but they wouldn't let us in, right? Um, so it was tough. That, at least that was my experience. And then we learned to follow firefighters because a little different demeanor that day. They had lost a lot of uh, brothers and sisters and, in, the, in the original assault. And they just, I don't know what it was. The police officers were upset. I totally get it. 
I totally get it now. But what we ended up doing was following the firefighters and through these, these catacombs of damaged buildings. I remember the American Express building and, and sirens and, and going through almost knee deep vestiges of lives and, and computers and you know, stock options on the ground and you know, probably walking over, but who knows what we were walking over. And finally turned the corner and there it was. It was just so serious. Hang up, guys. I, I don't know how else to put it. I did one stand-up that day, and nowadays I'm telling you the way the, the, the media is, and the way I am too, I would have done a hundred. We are now at ground zero, just a few feet from the point of impact of these blasts. We've heard all morning, people just can't describe this. In these pictures, I think you can understand that. Pure devastation, total destruction. I think I described it as a, this open entrance to, to, to hell. And both you and I had used the word ground zero that day. I, I used it on the air and you used it on the radio. I think my, I may have got it from you. And I remember somebody, and by the way, not anybody was calling it ground zero that day. We just happened to use that term. And somebody actually came up to me and said, don't use that term, that's a war term. And it's gonna make this situation a lot worse. And I just went, and I remember turning around going, saying ground zero is gonna make this worse? Hearing the shouts of firefighters were like uh, clambering a, a, around the heap there in, in, in the center and I heard one guy saying, have you seen my brother? Have you seen my brother? I saw him earlier, it's okay. All right, I wanna find him. Found this Blackfoot, did you find that or whatever? And I remember handing it to a, or you did, I'm not sure, to an emergency responder. And, and, and the way they wrapped that, it was like a child had just been born and, and, and wrapping that foot in this uh, blanket or towel or whatever they had and the way they took that away, it just, it, it broke and filled my heart, this paradoxical thing. How do you describe this? Uh, chaos? Mayhem? I don't know, something like I've never seen before. And it's taken a little while for a structure to fall into place on an order of command. And now that seems to be falling in. Are you hearing any noises in there? Uh, no cries or anything like that. We hear metal shifting and whatnot, stuff like that. I like to always end these things with lessons for, for, for younger folks, you know, following in my footsteps, but there's no lessons from this one. Um, it's just, uh, just an inordinately interesting, memorable uh, day that, uh, it's ridiculous for me to say I'll never forget it. I, I just still, honest to God, cannot describe it. Watch your back!